Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lindsay Urban, Director of the Arts Institute of Middlesex County. Welcome to our weekly Art and Story Time. Today's story is the latest in our series celebrating Black History Month, and we are joined by our friends at the Civic League of Greater New Brunswick, as well as our special guest reader. At this time, please set your screen to speaker view. We will be recording this session, and if you wish to remain anonymous, please keep your camera turned off. It's now my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Sean Hewitt, Director of Youth Leadership for the Civic League of Greater New Brunswick. Good afternoon, Lindsay, and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Again, it's my pleasure uh, to be a part of this wonderful event each Wednesday. The Civic League, for those that don't know, is a nonprofit organization dedicated to supporting African-American and other minority groups in the Greater Brunswick community. My role at the League, as Ms. Lindsay said, is Director of Youth Leadership. And so I am there to support young people, fulfill their dreams, and reach their full potential. And I'm blessed to have uh, one of my favorite students, Ayana Slakem, here today, and she will be helping to lead in an activity. But for now, I turn it back over to you, Lindsay, to introduce, to move on with the program. All right. So as I mentioned, we have a very special guest today. Um, his name is Deputy Director Armwood. He's our Middlesex County Commissioner, and we're really excited to have him come and read this story to you. Thank you, Lindsay. Hello, everybody. I see some waves of hands out there. I see Kyle out there. Hi, Kyle. All right, everybody. All right, let's read a story called Dave the Potter, Artist, Poet, Slave. To us, it is just dirt, the ground we walk on. Scoop up a handful, the gritty grain slip between your fingers. On wet days, heavy with rainwater, it is cool and squishy mud pie heaven. But to Dave, it was clay, the plain and basic stuff upon which he learned to form a life as a slave nearly 200 years ago. To us, it is just a pot, round and tall, good for keeping marbles or fresh cut flowers. But to Dave, it was a pot large enough to store a season's grain harvest, to put up salted meat, to hold memories. Each one began out of clouds of dust, clotted clumps of clay, ground in the pug mill and carried wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow to Dave's spinning potter's wheel. With a flat wooden paddle, large enough to row across the Atlantic, Dave mixed clay with water drawn from Big Horse Creek until wet and stiff and heavy. He threw the clay, sometimes 60 pounds at once, and nobody knew how or where it would land, except for Dave. Dave kicked his potter's wheel until it spun as fast as a carnival's wheel of fortune. Like a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat, Dave's hands buried in the mounded mud pulled out the shape of a jar. His chapped thumbs pinched into the center, squeezed the inside against his fingers outside. As the wheel spun round and round, the walls of the jar rose up like a robin's puffed breast, but only so far before its immense weight threatened collapse. The jar grew so large 
Dave could no longer wrap his strong arms around it. If he climbed into the jar and curled into a ball, he would have been embraced. Only then did he stop his potter's wheel and roll long ropes of clay between his dry caked palms. Dave mounted these coils of clay one by one on the half finished jar. He ran his wet fingers along the sides to smooth it all together, kicking the wheel with the heel of his foot. The shoulder and rim shrugged upward as the jar took the shape Dave knew was there even before he worked the raw mound on his wheel. While the clay dried, Dave pounded wood ash and sand to mix a glass-like brown glaze to withstand time. But before the jar completely hardened, Dave picked up a stick and wrote to let us know that he was here. I wonder where is all my relation, friendship to all and every nation. Everyone, that's the end of the story. I thank you for listening to me today. I'll turn it back to Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deputy Director. That was wonderful. Thank you. So friends, this story is a real story. It's nonfiction. So Dave the Potter was a real guy who lived 200 years ago and actually created pots that are now in museums all across the world. So his work, you can go see it in person if you travel to some of these museums and you can see some of the poetry that he wrote on that pot. So Dave was a pretty incredible guy. Um, he was a slave, but even more than that, he was a, an artist, a potter, and a poet as well. So he wrote, which was pretty unusual back in that time for a slave to be able to do, but he did it. And not only did he write words, he wrote poetry. So he wrote them in an artful way. So that's something that I think is really cool for us all to think about. Um, so before I pass it on to Ayana, Miss Ayana is going to teach you guys how to create a pot with clay. Um, and I know that everybody doesn't have clay at home and that's all right. Uh, from that story we just heard, you might have clay in your backyard. So raise your hand. I'm just curious how many kids here have dug up mud from the backyard and tried to make something out of it or even just squished it between their hands. And then you, yeah, right? And when you squish it and then you look at the chunk that comes out and it looks just like your hand and you may have gotten in trouble for it, right? Mom or dad or grandma might have said, you're covered in mud. So now, from now on, you can tell mom and dad, grandma, teacher, whomever, you can tell them, oh, no, 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 this is clay. This is valuable. This isn't just dirt. It's not just mud. It's clay. So it's true that you really do, especially in New Jersey, we all have clay, most of us in our backyards. Um, it's just not quite the stuff that, that uh, we think of as clay today, but it's really clay. And so I'm going to pass it on to Miss Ayana. She's going to show us how to make a clay bowl. You can feel free if you have clay at home to do it. If you have Play-Doh, go grab the Play-Doh. This is a great time to pull that out. Last week, um, some, some of our friends gave us the idea of using aluminum foil from the drawer to actually make a pot. So you can use aluminum foil too, whatever you have on hand. And if you don't, you can just follow along and enjoy. Uh, we also have deputy director here for a little while longer. If anybody has any questions for the deputy director, please raise your hand. And um, this is a good time to ask him some questions too about what he does, his job, whatever comes to your mind, feel free to ask. All right, so Miss Ayana, here she is. Yes, Aubrey, you have a question? <clears throat> What's a deputy director? Hi, Aubrey. Um, in my position, what I do is there are a lot of different services that the county provides. So you're in Middlesex County. There are a lot of services that we provide to, throughout all the towns. 
So we have to determine how much money we spend on arts, how much money we spend on the schools and the colleges. And basically we kind of oversee how the money is spent. Okay. Okay. Are you guys ready to get started with today's activity? Yeah, yes, okay. All right, so I have some clay. Oh, and for if you were here last week, just to let you know, my little um, animal, it broke. When I went to go paint it, it broke. So that's real sad, right? But it's okay. We're gonna make pots today. So I'm gonna show you guys two ways you can make a pot. So I have my clay right here. I'm gonna um, separate it into two so that I can show you the both ways that I know how to make a pot. So which which um, which one do you guys wanna do first? Hard or easy? Well, not necessarily hard, more complicated, I would say. Which one do you wanna do first? Okay, well, I'm just gonna choose. Um, I'll do the, the easy way first. Okay, so with the easy way of making a pot, you get your clay and you roll it into a ball. Yep, just like what Nina is doing. Nina, you wanna show everybody what you're doing? You roll it like that, right? Don't forget, it gets messy. So after, Maria, are you gonna participate with us? Yes. So after you have a nice ball, here's mine. After you have a nice ball, you then, hold up. There we go. So you guys can see. So after you have a ball, you then want to put your thumb inside and make like a little entering, I wanna say. So you see what I'm doing? Put your thumb inside. And then you're gonna get this when you put your thumb inside. It should look something like this. A ball with an imprint. And after you get your ball with an imprint, then you're gonna start to form your pot. So you go around the edges and you could make a um like whatever shape you want. It could be a circle, an oval, a heart. You can make any kind of shape. Make sure it has a, a bottom, see me. I used to do this in school. You could also push it down to um, form it as well. Make sure you're at a surface where it can get dirty and you won't get in trouble by your parents. And look, I have a pot, all done. Do you like? It can dry and then I'll paint it. Hopefully this doesn't break. I don't think so though. And I can show you guys the next time. Does someone want to tell me one thing they learned today in school? Fractions. What'd you say, Aubrey? Fractions. <gasps> Fractions? Wow. Not my favorite. I yeah, not my favorite either. They're very complicated, but it's okay. I think you'll be good. Yeah, the only that I get is common Oh, okay. So that's kind of easy, right? Because you, all you have to do is add or subtract the numerator. OMG. Okay. How do you say your name? Krish? Is that how you say it? Yeah. Oh, I love your pot. It's nice and small. Look, I got a medium-sized pot. I made it in my art class. You made it in your art class? Yeah. That's cool. Is it dry? Um, I need to make it dry. Oh, it's not dry yet? 
Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm gonna let mine sit so that it can dry. Here, let me show you one more time. This is my pot. And I'm gonna show you another way we can make pots. So this way, um, I'm gonna break my clay in half so that I could create a foundation. Um, when, I'm, when I say a foundation, I mean like the bottom part to start to form my pot. And then once I have my foundation, I'm going to start to roll the clay out. How in the story, when Dave, he rolled the clay in his hand, and he made like a little snake. Okay, so this is my foundation. This is gonna be the bottom of my um, new pot. I'm gonna take a piece of clay. And then I'm going to roll it in my hand, in my palm. And I'm gonna to try to roll it enough so that um, it's able to wrap around my foundation that I created. Miss Ayana, I'm just thinking about that story, Dave the Potter and mm -hmm. the size of his pot. I remember, um, in the story, it said 60 pounds. I bet you there's some some friends here in this in this Zoom session that weigh the same amount as some of those pots. Can you imagine <laughs> being able to fit inside a pot that big and being that heavy with that giant lump of clay, a clay as big as your body? It's huge. That would be so cool, right? I can't imagine. It's a lot of clay. I guess that is. Okay, cause my pot is starting to look cute, guys. Hold on, I'm gonna show y'all. Let me let me show y'all. Hold on. Look, look at that. Doesn't that look so cool? It's a right? little thin, so it's flopping everywhere. Oh, okay. I'm gonna fix it. All right. Hold on. Let me fix it. I'm gonna try to mold it together so that um it doesn't mess up. Okay, Maya, I like your um pop. Oh, you you having fun with it? You throwing it around? Don't let it break. Are you guys still working on your pots? If you are, can I see your progress? Is that another pot you made, Krish? Um, it's the same one that you made. The same one. The same one I made. Yeah. Like this one. No, the another one you're making. The second. Oh, one. like the one that I'm rolling out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That looks nice. It's nice and small. Yeah. I'm gonna try to make mine big. Do you know what are you guys gonna um use your pots for? What are you gonna use them for? You know you can use them for many different things. I made a plate. You made a plate? Oh wow. So you made a clay plate? Mm -hmm. that that's nice. Like Say one more. So you just flattened it out and that's how you made it? Wow, that is so cool. I'm trying to work on my foundation and to get the um, clay to stick together so that I won't break. Miss Ayana, I have a little tip for you. Yes. For for because you're right. When that clay dries, it it hardens and it shrinks up, and sometimes mm -hmm. it pulls apart where there's a seam. Yeah. So if you use your finger or your nail or the back of your finger, whatever works best, or your thumb to smooth that clay. Mm -hmm. kind of smooth that seam then it'll be stronger it, it does this it holds it tight as opposed to oh. that so that's something well, thank to you about. yeah thank you miss Lindsay. i'm about to do that right now so that um my foundation is going to be okay but it keeps sticking to the um, table and i didn't want to put paper under it because i didn't want the paper to get stuck to my pot oh maya. oh maya what'd you say i'm sorry i didn't hear you I'm saying like my my clay is like air dry clay, which means mm -hmm. like when I keep it out, it gets hard, and it's getting hard because I'm keeping it out for so long. Yeah, I I have the same kind of clay as you. I have air dry clay. And Maya, you in Ayana, you could add a little bit of water if you want to. Yeah, I have a a cup with some water inside, just in That'll case help. I want to know. 
give it a little dab with the water. I'm curious to see somebody try to press something into their clay. Oh, like I'm going to do that too. Yeah, like maybe Ayana, I'm looking at your leaves back there. I don't, I don't want oh. you to hurt your plant, but I wonder what a leaf would look like pressed into that clay. Look, oh, wait, I can't hold it. Okay, so look, I um, closed the seam. Can somebody do the same type of bowl I'm doing so that we could um, work together and show each other? So I think I'm gonna use my um, bowl maybe as like a little decoration for my room. I might wanna put some of my own jewelry, like my earrings or any rings or bracelets. I don't have any more clay. I finished my bag. Oh, it's okay. But I do have more colors, different. Colors. Do you have you have more clay colors? Yeah, like. Uh, Did you buy them like that? This one's a pretty color. Oh, that's a nice pink color. Yeah, that's really pretty. But then I'll mix colors, and then I'll get a one color, and I'll stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's okay. If you maybe you can make a different one, but just with a different maybe, color. Maybe I can just um do a small bowl. Like take a small oh. bowl and start over, and then I have more clay. Oh, I okay. Have, I can make a medium bowl like you did. Like me? You want to make a medium bowl? Is everybody doing okay? Can I see some of your progress? What have you guys did so far? Sticks. Lots of sticks. You said lots of what? Sticks. Oh, can I see? Um, I'm not really using clay, but lots of sticks. Oh. Ooh. Okay, so what are you going to make out of that? I do not know. I'm taking it where my mind takes me. Oh, all right. Go with the flow. That's where it is. Where, that's that's okay. You could just go with the flow. I like to go with the flow sometimes too, only if necessary. Mostly go with the flow when I'm drawing, but in this, mm -hmm. one, it also comes in art. Yes, it's nothing wrong with going with the flow because then you could just create something that probably someone else has never created before, and then you know what that makes you a artist. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Who wouldn't want to be an artist? And then maybe one day you could become famous. Yeah, like. And then I could say, oh, I know who that is. That's Aubrey. You know? And that'll be so cool. When I grow up, I'm going to have my own art museum. Really? Is that really what you want to do? Yes. That's cool. Okay, I could probably paint something for you and put some in your museum. I love to paint. Yes, I will put some of your things in my museum. Okay. Okay, I tried the decoration. It did not work. So I just tried no? to just made it bigger. Okay. My Maybe. Got stuck. Do you want to engrave something on your pot before it dries? Do you know what engrave means? No, engrave means to like, okay, get a pencil. You have a pencil? Yeah. And then using your pencil, you can write your name. And when you write your name on your pot, you're engraving your name on your pot. Or you can write whatever you want. It doesn't have to be your name, but the, I just gave that as an example of what you can write. All right. Look, my, my hands are getting dirty. Miss Lindsay. I tried to put the water, but it just spread it on my hand, so it did not work. Look, you have to um, buy me. You have to put your finger inside of the water. Look, so what I'm doing is I'm putting my finger in the water, mm -hmm. and then I'm go going with my pot and like rubbing the water. My finger that has the water on it, like rubbing it and like trying to mold it together. Oh. Well, I only had a water bottle, so I just sprinkled it like that. Oh, okay. Because it has a straw on it. Okay. 
It's all right. I'm trying to um cover the seam so that my my pot won't break, but it's a little rough. Now I'll draw my pot. Maya, you look like you have a little art studio there. Right, and I'm loving it. It's actually my office. This is, oh, your office? Wow. Do you wow. go to school in your office? Yes? It looks nice. Closet in the background. <laughs> That's okay, though. <laughs> That's the cool thing about being at home, because then we get to show people stuff that we probably won't be able to bring at bring to school that's really cool you know so i'm tr i'm currently trying to um make like little ridges with the top of my pot hold on i'm gonna show you give me one second today in my art class i made this oh my goodness i love it mug. say it one more time it's a hot chocolate mug a hot chocolate mug that looks really nice i love it do you like to drink hot chocolate mm -hmm. me too hot chocolate is good oh i didn't see your bowl can i see your bowl please oh yes i love it did you make it the way that i made it yeah but i didn't Oops. use clay i don't have clay that's we don't okay. know what clay is but we i use play-doh that's okay play-doh and clay are almost similar well they're very they're basically kind of similar but I know with clay, you can um, you can make like in school when I used to make clay pots in art class in elementary school. That was like a long time ago. Um, when I used to make pots, my teacher would tell us to make it, and then she would put it in this little, I don't know what's that called, like this little thing where it's fire inside and it'll like harden inside of there. Yeah, I think you're talking about a kiln, Miss Ayana. Yes, that's yeah. what it's called. Yep, I think, and I bet that's what Dave the Potter, I bet you he used a kiln for mm -hmm. his too. Because then if you have a kiln, then you can really, you can use it for drinking and eating. Mm -hmm. So these ones you won't be able to, if it's air dry clay, you won't be able to use it for eating and drinking. You don't want to do that because it will turn back mm -hmm. into mud, right? Yes. So that's something to, to be aware of. Um, we're going to wrap it up, but I just I just wanted to thank, thank you all for, for joining us and also giving me an idea because Ms. Aubrey Rose and, and Maya talking about your own spaces and talking about wanting to have your own art gallery or museum, you know, we could all do that at home now. You guys have some great artwork from all these sessions and from school. It's time to start hanging some of that artwork up and you can create your own museum. And I think that would be really fun. Um, and though we can't invite a lot of people from outside to see our artwork right now, you could invite family members and you might even be able to charge them to come through your museum. So that, that could be fun, right? You could sell tickets. And then once we are able to invite people, then you could invite friends to come and see your museum. But I think that's a great idea. So thank you for giving me that idea, everybody. Um, I think that's really cool. So. I want to thank thank you all again for coming and sharing your artwork with us. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Um, though Black History Month will be over, we all know that Black History is all year round. So we're going to continue to look at some of these books and um, celebrate throughout the entire year. And next week, we're going to start uh, with Women's History Month. And so we're going to start with by celebrating Miss Josephine Baker, and she was an incredible dancer and performer. She's she was a real real life person. So again, another bio, biographical work of of uh, writing here, and um, Hi. we'll actually be doing some some dancing and some movement. So get get ready, get your dancing shoes ready, and come back and join us uh, next week. For, for the story of Miss Josephine Baker. Um, I also wanted to thank Mr. Deputy Director Armwood for joining us. Uh, he did a wonderful job reading. I think we can all agree he's a great reader. So he, he must have paid attention in school. Thank you, Mr. Armwood. And of course, um, Sean from the Civic League, Mr. Hewitt, and, and as always, Ayanna uh, Slakum for, for leading us in a very calming therapeutic uh, session of art making. So thank you for that. And we'll see you all again soon.